Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, the UK changes medical rules for private pilots, Dragon spacecraft returns to Earth with cargo, PSA wants to keep good pilots. Hello, I'm Christopher C. Odom, it's May 13th, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. Recreational flying certification for pilots in the UK runs similar to what we have in the United States. The private pilot certification in the UK, like the United States, has always had a medical examination requirement. Now that's changing. The equivalent of third class medical in the UK will soon no longer be required for private pilots. Only recently announced, these changes will take effect in September. The UK Civil Aviation Authority has announced that medical requirements for private pilots are to change in line with its top level principles for general aviation regulation. Commercial operation and airshow pilots will continue to require medical examinations. Those top level principles of the UK Civil Aeronautics Authority are, in part, only regulate directly when necessary and do so proportionately deregulate where we can, delegate where appropriate, and help create a vibrant and dynamic general aviation sector in the UK. This news makes those of us in the US take a deep breath and sigh when we think about how our own FAA operates. A SpaceX Dragon cargo spacecraft splashed down in the Pacific Ocean on Wednesday of this week, about 260 miles southwest of Long Beach, California, with more than 3,700 pounds of NASA cargo science and technology demonstration samples from the International Space Station. The Dragon spacecraft will be taken by ship to Long Beach, where some cargo will be removed and returned to NASA, and the spacecraft will be prepared for shipment to SpaceX test facility in McGregor, Texas for processing. A variety of technology and biology studies conducted in the unique microgravity environment of the space station returned aboard the commercial resupply aircraft. Dragon is currently the only station resupply spacecraft able to return a significant amount of cargo to Earth. The spacecraft lifted off from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida April 8th and arrived at the space station April 10th, carrying almost 7,000 pounds of supplies and scientific cargo on the SpaceX company's eighth NASA contracted commercial resupply mission. After the break, PSA Airlines promotes pilot retention. Ret There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Errol TV, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at errol-news.net. PSA Airlines has not just hung out the help wanted sign, they are aggressively pursuing the best candidates they can get. PSA has announced two improvements. In its efforts to provide an enhanced compensation package to attract and retain the top level pilots, the airline will be instituting a first officer retention bonus and a competitive commuter policy. PSA says this enhances existing employment opportunities, which offers the highest quality of life in the regional industry and a true pilot flow program to American Airlines. PSA will be rolling out a one-time $20,000 bonus to all active first officers, which will be retroactively effective May 1st, 2016. In addition, PSA is also instituting an enhancement to their commuter policy, providing a $250 monthly allowance that all pilots may use at their discretion to offset the cost of commuting hotel expenses. PSA says they are poised to hire more than 500 pilots this year over the next several years. It's Friday at last, 
And that means it's time for ANN CEO and Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell to check in with his weekly barnstorming commentary. When a new general aviation aircraft enters the market, it's usually a pretty straightforward event. However, as Icon Aircraft brings their light sport aircraft to the market, Jim says it presents what he calls the Icon Dilemma. Here's this week's barnstorming. Thanks, Bree. Thanks, Chris. Um, this is a tough one. We broke this story some weeks ago about issues that were being raised with Icon Aircraft and an absolutely bizarre, highly restrictive, and potentially unlawful contract that was getting dropped on people within weeks or months of when they were supposedly going to get their aircraft and for which they were supposed to dump pretty large amounts of money in preparation thereof. Well, you pretty much know what happened. Uh, we detailed what happened with the contract and unlike previous years where we do a hard story and a big story and everybody runs around for a couple of weeks trying to figure out whether or not we were right or not and as has been our track record so far, we've always been right and they figure it out and eventually they wind up doing the story. This time the story took hold a lot quicker. A lot of people looked into it. Some folks did some investigation of their own. I'm going to call out competitor AvWeb for some good work on this one. And to make a long story short, it became very clear that the contract that was being pushed on people was absolutely, what's the best word for this, unacceptable. Folks, we're not idiots. We're not fools. And a contract that gives the manufacturer more rights than the buyer overall certainly doesn't work for this industry. And the bright, shining example of what should have been an exciting new next generation light sport aircraft looks like it's going down in flames. We're getting complaints all over the map. First of all, we heard from dozens upon dozens of people who will not sign the contract. Mind you, we've heard that there is a new contract coming up, but considering the fact that aircraft were supposed to be coming off the line either late this month or next, depending on who you talk to, uh, that contract had better show up soon. So far, we don't know of any that have shown up or have been signed, uh, at least as far as new ones. More important, there are some other issues. We've heard from folks that were offered jobs by the company and all of a sudden found themselves being offered jobs for a temp company without the benefits that they were originally enticed with. We've heard from folks involved with looking over the flight training operation. And I gotta tell you, this constant push that, you know, 20 hours you're gonna learn to fly an ICON isn't happening. But one of the things that really disturbs me is that ICON went hunting. They went hunting for general journalists who knew nothing about aviation, who did these wonderful articles, beautiful articles, sweet articles, positive articles. We fly the Icon A5. They didn't fly the Icon A5. They were allowed to hold the stick. They were allowed to move a little bit because with very few exceptions, these people weren't pilots. And the few pilots who apparently were allowed to fly the airplane did so under restriction. At least we haven't heard of anybody at this point who's popped up otherwise. We talked to a competitive publication who refused to fly, again, AvWeb, and they were given conditions that they found unacceptable. When we asked about flying the airplane, we were also told about a number of conditions that we also found unacceptable. A couple of weeks ago, I offered an absolutely transparent process to fly and evaluate the aircraft with video and audio accompaniment, and we've heard nothing. What do we do? ICON seems to think this industry needs to march to their drums, and the industry thinks otherwise. I do not see how this project can succeed under its own merits. Serious changes, especially in leadership, need to be made. Serious changes in the contract need to be made. And transparency needs to occur because they're not answering our questions. They're not answering a lot of other competitors' questions. And most important of all, we really don't know what's going on over there because there are very serious questions being raised. They're not being answered. Icon, speak up. If you don't, this industry at this point is going to vote a resounding no. For the Aero News Network, Airborne and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell, and boy, do I have questions. After these messages, a rare World War II warbird takes to the air. To the air. 
Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Jo Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. Now Bree is going to take us around the patch. Thanks, Christopher. A P-63F Bell King Cobra restored by the Commemorative Air Force has returned to the air. This rare World War II warbird is one of just three such aircraft that are airworthy. It's expected to be making the rounds on the airshow circuit this year. GoGo has announced that its global connectivity technology, 2KU, is now live on Aeromexico. The first aircraft to fly with 2KU is an Aeromexico Boeing 737-800. The airline has installed the new 2KU system on five aircraft. Bell Helicopter has donated $5,000 in support of the Army Aviation Museum. The U.S. Army Aviation Museum maintains a collection of over 160 military aircraft, including several Bell helicopters. It has one of the largest collections of military helicopters in the world. A UAV pilot accused of flying too close to firefighting operations in New Zealand has been convicted for violating controlled airspace. In what was described as a test case in that country, a date for sentencing has not yet been determined. ANN has learned that Klein Gillenhausen, a dedicated power and glider aerobatic pilot and a former member of the International Aerobatic Club Board of Directors, has passed away. He will be deeply missed by his many friends in the aerobatic community. That's the trip around the patch. Back to you, Christopher. On June 4th through 5th, the Red Bull Air Race World Championship makes a return to the city of Chiba for its second visit to Japan. Last year, 120,000 fans lined the Mukuhari Beach to witness Japan's first ever Red Bull Air Race. For 2016, Chiba will host the third race of the season and Yoshihide Muroya will once again be returning home to fly in front of his fellow countrymen. According to a statement on the Red Bull website, the Japanese pilot doesn't feel that being the local hero will add pressure when it comes to race day. Moroya says, it will be a big help to fly home with so many fans cheering for me. Moroya said he feels that the fans will be more diverse because the fan base has grown to include those that love other motorsports as well. Madoya has also experienced previous disqualifications for exceeding the maximum G-loading and vertical turn maneuvering established by the race rules. He says he is continuing to practice in preparation for the race and is keeping tabs on his G-readings. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily, Monday through Friday, with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news. From the staff of Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource, always have an app.